After you have created your geometry using the Sketch and Create tools, the second step is to place your geometric constraints. The purpose of geometric constraints is to capture design intent. That is to say, if the intention of your design is for two lines to be perpendicular or an arc to be tangent to a line, then it becomes a part of the design or part of the design intent. There are several geometric constraints and we're going to look at them in this video. Welcome back to Practical AutoCAD and Inventor, your source for practical solutions to your problems with AutoCAD and Autodesk Inventor. If you like these videos, please like and subscribe so you will be notified whenever new videos are published. Also, if you have any questions you would like me to answer, please leave a comment below. Now, on with the video. As stated a moment ago, the purpose of geometric constraints is to capture design intent. So you really need to take some time and get to know your geometric constraints so that you can use them effectively. In order to show how geometric constraints work, I'm going to start a new, to a new part file and start a new sketch. So I'll start a new sketch again just on that front plane. And I'm going to draw some sample geometry that really has no geometric constraints to speak of. Okay, so I've got some lines here and I'll put a circle in here as well. So geometric constraints are these constraints that allow us to tell how the geometry should relate to uh, one part of geometry should relate to another part of the geometry. Again, capturing that design intent. The first tool that we want to get to know is this one right here, const uh, coincident constraint. Coincident means that two points um, share something in common. It could be an endpoint, it could be a point on a line, and so on. So in order to, er, to in order to demonstrate this, I'm going to add a coincident constraint between the center of this circle and just the line in particular. I'm not going to pick an endpoint, I'm just going to move up and pick the line in particular. You can see that when I do that, the circle is moved to, the center of the circle is moved to the line. And if I move the circle, it's going to stay on the line, no matter how that line changes. But not only that, I could move the circle off of the line. And no matter where that circle goes, it's still going to be coincident with that line, even though it might not be at the very end of that line. So I'm going to undo that so that we can look at it a different way. I can also use the coincident constraint to apply the center of that circle to an endpoint of the line. Notice if I move to the endpoint and I click, pick, now the center of that circle is coincident with this line, but specifically the endpoint of the line. And no matter what I do, as I move this around, it's always going to be on the endpoint of that line. So a couple different ways of using the coincident constraint. The coincident constraint could also be used to put the center of the circle on the center point in the origin geometry. Remember we referred to origin geometry in a previous video. You have all of your different planes, your different axes, and your center point. I could do the same thing. I could say I want a coincident constraint between the center of this circle and for example the x-axis. And I can just come right over here and pick it in the browser and now it automatically applies a coincident constraint between this circle and the x-axis. No matter what I do, it's always going to be on that x-axis. Or I could even apply that coincident constraint between the center of the circle and the center point of the drawing. And now no matter what, the center of that circle is going to be stuck at the center of that drawing. So coincident constraint, very powerful. Next up, we'll look at the collinear uh, constraint. Collinear constraint allows us to have two lines that are collinear. They lie in the same line, okay, in the same two-point line. Obviously, this line and this line are not now collinear. However, if I use the collinear constraint, when I pick both lines, 
it aligns them so that no matter what I do to either one of the lines, the other one is going to stay collinear with it. And it doesn't matter where the endpoints are, it's going to be collinear with that original one. Next up, we have concentric. This is where two arcs or two circles or a circle and an arc or whatever all share the same center. Let me draw another circle just for fun. And what I can do is I can now say I want concentricity. I want this circle and this circle to have the same center. So I'll pick one, pick the other, and it moves one so that it has the same center as the other. If I move them now, they move together concentric. Next up we're going to look at parallel. Parallel makes two objects parallel. For example, I could say I want a parallel constraint between this line and this line and it makes them parallel. Now no matter what I do with one line, it's automatically going to keep that other line perfectly parallel with the first one. Okay. Likewise, I could come in and I can say I want to apply a perpendicular constraint. I want a perpendicular constraint between this line and this line. And now that perpendicular constraint is there. Whatever I do, that's always going to be a 90 degree angle right there. No matter how I change it, you'll see how it, as I click and drag and deflect this object, that corner will always be perpendicular. Horizontal, if I want a line to be horizontal, you can pick a line. So if the, my design intent is for this line to be horizontal, I'll pick the horizontal constraint and I will pick that line and it makes that line horizontal. Now, I still have that perpendicular constraint in here. So no matter what I do with this line, it's going to be horizontal. And whatever I do with this line, it's still going to be vertical. So I don't have to put a vertical constraint on this because it knows it's perpendicular to the horizontal line. Vertical allows me to do the same thing except in the other direction. Let me deflect this out of the way a little bit here. Let me, I'm going to trim this portion off and I'm going to deflect this one more time. Okay. So <clears throat> let me draw a new line. So obviously this line is not vertical. I can come in here and I can say I want a vertical constraint on this line and it makes that line vertical. Now no matter what I do, it's going to be vertical. No questions asked. One other thing that you can do with these vertical and horizontal constraints is you can tell it how you want things to behave. So for example, if I have a rectangle and I want this rectangle to be centered on my center point, I can use a horizontal constraint and a vertical constraint. For example, I can say I want a horizontal constraint between the midpoint of this line. Notice the midpoint shows up there. And the center point of the drawing. Now, no matter what I do, that midpoint is going to be on the you know, the horizontal line there. And I can do the same thing with a vertical line. So I can say I want a vertical constraint between that center point of my drawing and the midpoint of this line. And now effectively I have centered this rectangle on my origin point, my center point. Another thing I can do is I can say I want, you know, this circle to be centered on there. So I can say I want a horizontal constraint between that center point and that center point as well. Okay, so that now gives me a lot of flexibility with how I can do some of my geometry. I'm going to get rid of this geometry, draw a little bit more stuff so we can look at the rest of the constraints that we have in place. Tangent. Oh, look what I did down here. I didn't even notice that. I'm going to erase that segment. Right click. Come on, give me a 
uh, I'll just use my trim tool, trim that out, trim that out. If I want the endpoint of this to be con coincident with that, I can say I want a coincident constraint between that endpoint and that endpoint, and it makes it coincident. Now, if I want this circle to be tangent to these, I can say I want a tangent constraint between this arc and this line. And again, like I did before, that arc is going to be tangent to that line. Even if it's not touching the line, the condition will be tangent. You could add it to as many lines as you need. This arc and the line, and this arc and this line. Now as you come in here and you deflect this and change your drawing, you'll see how it maintains those, co or those constraints no matter what your geometry looks like. This one is what they call a smooth G2 curvature. And it's more than just a fillet, but it's a fillet that gradually increases and decreases so that it makes a nice smooth change. Then finally, we have symmetric. In order to make symmetric constraints, <clears throat> I'm just gonna do something simple here. I'm gonna draw a line here. I will draw a similar line on the other side, but not exactly the same. And I'm going to do something new here. I'm going to project as a construction line my y-axis. So construction lines are not considered when creating profile geometry, but I can use this as part of a symmetric constraint. By the way, you can use any line as part of a symmetric constraint, but it's nice to use construction lines. So I can say I want a symmetric constraint. It asks me for the first sketch element, this one. It asks me for the sketch element that I want to uh, be applied, this one. And then it asks me for my symmetric line. I'll pick that one. And now they are symmetric. They're not necessarily uh, equal in length, but the angle is going to be symmetrical. Okay, If I wanted them to be equal in length, I would have to do a couple other things. For example, I could say I want a horizontal constraint between this endpoint and this endpoint. And then I could say I want these two lines to be equal. Okay, I only put the constraint on the bottom, so I could come in here and I could make this line much longer. But if I want them to be the same size, the last constraint we'll look at is equal. So I can say I want this line and this line to be equal. And now no matter what I do to one, the other one is automatically going to mirror it and maintain that symmetry. Now, to close this, there's a couple other things that you want to be aware of. Number one, never use the fixed constraint. It's considered taboo in most design situations because it's not related to con uh, the, the origin geometry in any way. Um, it's kind of just arbitrary and it's poor form. Do not use the fixed constraint. I wish they didn't even have it. The other thing is, um, again, you want to try to capture the, the design intent. So think about also using your origin geometry, especially your planes and your center point as part of the geometry. I'm going to close this sketch and close this drawing or close this part and then I'll go back to this one. So remember, think about this one. We had that part file. Um, when I'm going to create my geometry and, and I'm going to constrain it now, if I want to see all of my constraints that are already in this geometry, you can press F8 which will show your geometry. So I can see that those two lines are perpendicular those two lines are perpendicular. This one is horizontal, okay? And then we've got tangent and tangent. This one doesn't seem like it has any constraints on it, but it does. It's perpendicular and it's, you know, it's it's going to because it's perpendicular, this one, you know, it's perpendicular here. This one's going to be guaranteed to be horizontal. If I try to add a horizontal constraint to that bottom line, it's going to give me an error message. And it says it will over constrain the sketch. So we'll just cancel that. It doesn't need a constraint on it. The only constraint that I need on this one is to tell it where it is located in space. If 
I want to get rid of my constraints, by the way, I can press F9. Get to, uh, my F9 is not working, so I can right click and I can hide my constraints. Now, given this, that this arc, you know, the center point of this circle is an important facet of my design, it's going to have a hole in it. It makes sense to me that that might be an important part of my design. So I'm going to say I want a coincident constraint between the center point of that arc and the center point of my drawing. And now from here, I can come in and I can add in my dimensional constraints, which is what we'll talk about in video three.